Let's move it out west. Let's talk about Notre Dame and the Fighting Irish are a a five-and-a-half-point underdog at USC. Uh, The total sits at 64-and-a-half, and the Irish and the Trojans. I mean, this thing has become a massive, massive game. at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time on ABC. It's at the Coliseum. It's in L.A. Of course, they do that weird split where when they play at Notre Dame, they got to play it in October. When they play at USC, they have to play this thing around Thanksgiving because USC, I guess, is worried about being cold. Uh, Whatever. Notre Dame won last year 31-16. to Notre Dame... 7-3 Seven and three straight up, five and five against the spread in the last ten against USC. I mean, this thing's just kind of gone back and forth, back and forth. Notre Dame is thirteen and three against the spread on the road against winning teams in the last sixteen. USC is five and one against the spread in their last six against winning teams. So the trends it seem to go both ways. Parker, I'm going to start with you here. Notre Dame is tough to figure out, but that running game should have no problem with that USC defense. Over the last five weeks, Notre Dame number 11 in rushing success. USC's defense is number 130 in that metric. Notre Dame number 19 in standard downs PPA. USC defense number 109. Notre Dame will be able to stay ahead of the chains here. USC coming off that big emotional spot last week. Uh, Parker, what do you see here? Notre Dame's offense is um, 67th in uh, EPA per play but they are 28th in success rate. That's key to me because uh, USC's defense is 109th in EPA per play, but 123rd in success rate. So Notre Dame's not necessarily winning with big chunk plays, and USC's not necessarily getting burned on big chunk plays. What's happening is teams are consistently moving the ball against USC. Um, I think that actually speaks to a lot of USC's turnover luck, um, is that they are just uh, have been avoiding the big play, and they're able to make teams kind of consistently move the ball um, uh, against them there. So I, I'm inclined to believe that Notre Dame's stretch of physicality here, I thought it was an illusion with Syracuse and and against Clemson, they have shown us that they are physical. And once they kind of have their identity, once they took some onus off of their quarterback, have been able to play a little bit better. This Notre Dame defense, 15th in EPA per pass, 75th in EPA per rush. A little bit worried because there's a split there. I think that teams are are rushing against this Notre Dame defense. Um, but overall, the unit has improved. They're 27th in EPA per play. Um, the the one thing that will be interesting to look at is um, USC's third and fourth down defense has just been atrocious. 125th in the nation. Notre Dame much better on third and fourth downs, especially with running. They're going to play three yards in a cloud of dust. They're going to try and make this game as unsexy and boring as possible. Um, and the last couple of weeks, they've been really effective at just slowly kind of doing the python and dominating their um, opponents with, with some physicality. Uh, certainly a huge test for USC. I had this very close to a toss-up. Um, the reason I'm not going to play Notre Dame on the road here is just because USC's turnover luck has been absolutely absurd this season. They're good for a weird defensive score. And um, if we are, you know, playing the the audition, we've, we've seen this season Lincoln Riley score with very little time left and then dramatically alter the uh, the outcome of a game. So um, should be should be a good one. We'll be watching for Notre Dame's physicality and what that tells us about USC uh, in national competition as they play for a Pac-12 uh, or as, as they go on to play for a Pac-12 in a play off appearance you you mentioned Notre Dame wanting to make this game unsexy uh that's almost impossible to do with the play of Caleb Williams because it is a lot of fun to watch this guy play 33 touchdowns three interceptions and Kyle you know we'll move to you Caleb Williams lives for these kind of moments it seems like uh but at the same time with as good as that passing game has been for USC Notre Dame's defense the last five weeks, number two in PPA per pass allowed, number four passing success rate allowed. They are number nine on passing down PPA. This Notre Dame defense looks like it could be the kind that would be up to the task here. I mean, we saw what they did in week one against uh, Ohio State, and it appears that they have just done nothing but get better as they move along. Remember what they did against the high-flying North Carolina offense. Uh, just gave up a bunch of points late, but they, they ran out early in that one. Uh, what do you see going on here, Kyle? Well, at first, I think uh, the chat has been fired up about this game. I like the the back and forth in the chat. Um, I think it is fair to say that Notre Dame's last five opponents could skew their numbers a bit. You know, I mean, only Clemson of the last five teams that they've played has really been very good. Um, having said that, Notre Dame has definitely improved. I think Freeman's a good coach. Um, USC's defense is not great against the run or the pass. Uh, I think uh, USC has plenty of weaknesses in general, but they've been able to hide those with the plus 20 turnover margin. Um, 18 interceptions is just insane. Uh, Drew Pine really hasn't been that good of a quarterback, but he only has three turnover-worthy plays. So if he needs to keep that up this week, they really can't afford to turn it over. 
Um, Notre Dame has been pretty good against the, the run and really good against the pass. Uh, the number is right about where it should be, in my opinion. And honestly, I could see a lot of different scenarios in this game. I see Julius is talking about the money line for Notre Dame. It would not shock me to see Notre Dame win outright. I, I think there are uh, definitely scenarios where that could happen. But it's not going to really sh- surprise me if uh, USC wins by 17 or 20 or something like that. So I think too much variance on a game like this, a game that I don't really want to bet, but I really want to watch it. It's same here, same here. At my lean would be towards Notre Dame. I don't feel good enough about it to actually play it, so we have no official plays on this one, but uh, but there are certainly leans on it. 